What's going on everybody? Thanks again for joining me out in my shop today for another YouTube video. And I'd also like to thank my sponsor, Canine Sports Sack. Click the link below for 10% off caninesportsack.com. Today, I have busted out one of my dear old friends from 25 years ago when I was 15 years old. I built this chainsaw driven motorized skateboard. In this day and age, in the year 2021, there are so many kits out there for building electric skateboard. A lot of battery options, a lot of controller options that you can find on eBay and Amazon. I might even link some of them below. I just wanted to bring something back for us primitive motorheads that are still out there. Even in 2021, this is actually a way cheaper way to build a motorized skateboard. The batteries alone are going to cost like over a hundred dollars a used old chainsaw you can probably find one on classified for like 30 to 50 dollars and then cobble together something like this or or better <laughs> and then you got yourself like a total of like a hundred dollars or less some rockin motorized skateboard i am not here to claim that i did this the best way possible but i do want to show you how i did it so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that i made and make a better one at 15 years old i'm still kind of proud of how this thing came out it went 25 miles an hour and that's way faster than i needed it to go due to the sketchy nature and and the way i built some of the components on this thing it ended up face planting going full speed <laughs> and it was actually a pretty lucky crash because it like locked up like from a full speed run down my street it just stopped and then i just went flying and landed like flat on the ground like even my face was like sideways on the pavement <laughs> and i just landed so flat on the ground that i didn't actually slide and like tear up my face it was really crazy probably the best way that crash could have ended up under the circumstances and by the way this ended up being my first ever welding project I was really stoked to learn how to weld on my friend's stick welder my dad was in construction so all he had was wood stuff prior to that I was putting like Briggs and Stratton engines on a plastic power wheel using two by four frames to like extend it and stuff like that that was back when I was like 10 and 12 years old so i've been doing this kind of stuff for a really long time some other things that i did were put chainsaws on those push scooters that had the 12 inch air tires on them you don't really see those anymore except for a thrift store now i thought of different ways to put the chainsaw behind it but i wanted to do this one different i wanted the engine to be underneath and maintain the center of gravity and the only problem with that is fitting a chainsaw engine under a skateboard is a little bit hard to do because obviously there's like no ground clearance. This was my first welding project ever and it was really challenging because this is really thin wall steel tube and I was using a stick welder of all things. I had kind of drawn it up and I, I built these little platform extender things and put a plate underneath that I could bolt to regular skateboard trucks because I didn't really know how to design my own skateboard trucks back then which is something that I would probably try to do now. As I mentioned, this was before like internet was cool and stuff. Even if they did have the internet, there wasn't Amazon, there wasn't eBay, it didn't exist. All I had was this local hardware store called Yardbirds that doesn't even exist anymore. And then for like the real specialty items like pulleys and belts and stuff, they didn't have that kind of stuff. And I really had to talk my mom into driving me to Ace because I couldn't get there on a bike. So I built the extended frame and then I had to get some tires that were big enough for a pulley. So I ended up getting these, these lawnmower wheels and then I needed to fit it with an axle somehow. I didn't have access to anything else except for what was sold at these hardware stores and they happen to have wheelbarrow bearings and I was like, well, how can I make those work? So I found some tube at the hardware store that fit the wheelbarrow bearings in. So I ended up using the wheelbarrow bearings, this tube, and then I used like some U-bolts to go around the skateboard trucks and bolt it all together. That also served as a mounting plate that I could bolt the engine to. 
I didn't know how to make a good hub flange that would hold the wheels on, so I just did the minimum that I could think of at the time, which was just drill through the plastic into the axle. And you can see how those were shredded. They actually didn't last very long. They lasted until the point where I crashed the thing and face planted enough to to where I wasn't interested in riding it anymore. Not to mention, this thing was really sketchy to ride. At 25 miles an hour and a really unstable platform, this thing was like a death wish. It had a pretty bad speed wobble because it had um, just standard skateboard trucks, which you know, ride on those rubber bushings. And I had like this really heavy engine hanging on those things. I had to tighten them a ton and they would keep wearing out and loosen up. If that weren't bad enough, the fact that it's really tall and not very wide, it made it really unstable to turn and it would like tend to kind of roll when I went to lean on it to make a turn. I cut off part of a bike handlebar to use for the controller. I sawed off a bike brake lever that I used for the throttle and I just had a kill button on top. And I was kind of proud of the upholstery that I actually like sewed when I was 15 to go around this, this thing. It was like this fake leather stuff. And it used to look a lot better, but it, it got in a couple of crashes and now it's all kind of torn up. When I first built this thing, I tried to do some calculations to figure out how fast it was gonna go with the um, belt reduction that I had going on. I just had one pulley bolted directly onto one of the wheels. And then I had a pulley um, directly mounted onto the chainsaw shaft and there was a belt just running in between them. And I had done some rough calculations, but I didn't really know what the RPM on the chainsaw engine was. So I didn't really know what RPM to start with. I just kind of guessed, and I, I don't even remember what that number was now. It's been so long. The point of it is, I was wrong. And I thought it was going to go like 15 miles an hour or something, but when I push started it the first time down a hill, the engine barely started up, and it was going like 15 miles an hour just at idle, and it was like barely running it at idle. <laughs> So I knew I was way wrong and I had to add a reduction pulley system in the middle. Now one thing that I'm kind of proud of with this thing that I thought of way back then was like how do I make a bearing for this middle pulley? And so what I did was take a coat hanger and snip it into a bunch of little rods. I had this bolt that was smaller than the hole and I stuffed all the coat hanger pieces around it to make like this needle bearing assembly and in uh, retrospect it actually was a really bad idea but it worked for a while it was that needle bearing thing that ended up causing my face plant crash so what ended up happening was while well, it was going full speed at 25 miles an hour that intermediate bearing thing and the little coat hanger needle bearing assembly just like locked up solid and that's what ended up sending me right in right face first into the ground in retrospect, I would have been better off just putting a bolt through it, but it was kind of a cool idea. You gotta give me points for that. I've kept this thing kicking around for so long because it's kind of one of those things that I'm just kind of proud of that I was able to make this thing at 15 from hardware store parts. If I get a few people interested in the comments that wanna see this thing run, then I might make another video resurrecting it and improving some of the things that I did really janky back then. And thank you so much for watching my video. Click that like button if you thought it was cool. Subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out. Stay tuned for more Chang Lee videos and I'll see you in the next one.